Hi, I'm Dr. Ogwin and I am about to explain to you low back pain in a nutshell. I want to give a big picture overview of low back pain because there is so much confusion surrounding it. Uh, a lot of times people find that what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another person. Should I see a chiropractor? Should I see a physical therapist? Should I stretch? Should I exercise? Should I do traction or decompression? Should I get a massage? And there are all of these different things. And I want to explain why some of those things work for one person and not another. And really that brings us to, well, there are different tissues that can be injured, different structures that can be injured. Um, and then they can be injured for different reasons. And then of course there are different therapeutic options. So let's kind of get to it and start with the different tissues that can be injured or the structures. There are four structures that can usually be um, the culprit of bringing on low back pain. There are the discs, there are the joints, there are the muscles, and there are the nerves. So if we start with the discs, it, it, and this is kind of, if you're going to look at the spine coming straight in from the body this way, and we have a spine here, so I'm coming straight in here, straight in here you'll see that you've got the bones of the spine, and then in between each bone, you have the discs. The reason that you have discs there are so that you're not just one block of bone. If you're just one block of bone, you're a stone. You can't move. So the discs are cushions in between the bones that allow us to bend forward and backwards, to rotate and to bend side to side. Over time, those discs can become injured. So same thing, if I look forward here, look forward here, I've got the bones, I've got the discs. If we take the disc and look at it this way, you've got an outside ring that is more of a hard cartilage material, and then the inside is more of a fluid type of a material. That outside ring sometimes over time develops nicks, tears, cracks, frays, and things like that. And when they get to the outside layer, that's where the nerve endings are, they can become painful. So that's the first type of low back pain um, is the disc injuries. I talked about the joints. So that is now instead of looking straight in at the body this way, come straight and look towards the back end. So that would be looking at a spine this way here. You've got the small joints in the back of the spine. Those are called facet joints. And then you've got large joints here on both sides called the sacroiliac joints or the SI joints that a lot of people call them those can become restricted and become a source of pain or they can become too hypermobile and too loose or just aggravated, irritated from some kind of an injury or a trauma. That can be a source of pain. We talked about muscular pain. This can be either trigger points or it can be muscle spasms. Muscles can spasm in a response to something else being injured and those are the types of pain that are it's hard to move. I don't want to. I don't want to move from this position. I know if I move from this position, it's going to hurt, and I'm just going to be stuck here like this. And then a few breaths, you kind of relax, and you take a step, and maybe it goes away, or maybe it spasms some more. Those are the really bad low back pains where people just don't want to move. They just feel stuck, locked in place, and that's because the muscle. It's a protective response, and that muscle just locked down on the spine there, not allowing you to move. Um, another type of muscle pain are trigger points. They're nowhere near as severe. However, they can be long lasting, they can be chronic last days to weeks, but they can last months to year. Those are those knots that people uh, get when you hear people say, I've got a knot in my hip or I've got a knot in my back or a knot in my shoulder. Usually what they're describing are those trigger points. And then the last type of uh, tissue that can be injured are the nerves and you get nerve pain. Those are usually your sciatica. When it relates to low back pain, I have sciatica. Uh, I have pain, deep pain in my hip, pain that goes down my leg, uh, a burning pain in my back sometimes. That's going to be the nerve pain. Why do those tissues become injured or aggravated? It can be from an injury, uh, a fall, a car accident, a sports injury, or something like that. Um, really common are just bad postures. A lot of people, we are too rounded and too flexed. Um, jobs, positions that we're in sometimes, so just these poor postures and bad positions can cause it. Muscular imbalances, so if muscles on one side of the hip or pelvis are tight in one area, but then on the other side maybe they're tight, or if there's just an imbalance in the muscle tone, especially around the hips and the pelvis and the low back, it causes the hips and the pelvis and the spine to maybe shift, what they, what they call out of alignment. I just feel out of alignment, something just feels off. Usually those are muscular imbalances that need to be stretched and probably exercised, which leads me to the last uh, point. 
uh, instability, not having enough strength within the muscles to support that is so common. That might be 50% or more of chronic low back pain. Just need to strengthen, but the proper exercises, just running out and doing crunches and sit-ups and things like that, could actually make it worse because it puts more compression on the spine. So you need the right exercises, but you do need to strengthen um, the spine. You need to strengthen the core. Let's talk about the different therapies. So this is where kind of it comes into play where uh, my buddy got an inversion table to hang upside down and it feels great. Well, it makes my back pain worse. So what are the, each of these you're gonna do a different therapy for usually. So if we go back to that disc, that was again looking straight through the front of the spine. We come in through here and we've got those discs that are in between the bones of the spine and those become irritated, they become injured. What can you do for that? Well, that could be the one where you hang upside down on an inversion table or we have traction tables here that just simply help the spine pull apart a little bit. It just pulls it from this end here and creates more space and it takes the pressure off of that disc. So that's one option for the disc pain. Um, other options are things that are called McKinsey extensions. I'm not going to get too much into this. I just want to put the name out there, but you can find therapists that do McKinsey extension. We do it a lot here in the office where they are going to test and find what range you're the most restricted in and or what range, if you hold it there for a couple of minutes, takes the pain away. The most common, and there are others, but the most common for disc pain is because disc pain is brought on by too much flexion. They're too rounded in their back usually, kind of in here, sitting long periods or doing things in a flexed position, bending over and things like that. So they might want to lay on their stomach be on their forearms, be on their hands, and they want to press up. They want to extend through their back. They want to get a lot of extension and they might want to hold that pose or that position for a couple of minutes and they might want to do that many times per day, maybe every hour. Um, again, that is just one option for this McKinsey method, but it is very successful in treating uh, low back pain that is caused by disc pain. So let's move on to the joint pain. Again, this is now looking in the back of the spine, looking straight at somebody's back in these small joints here, or that sacroiliac joint. This might be where a chiropractic adjustment or a spinal manipulation comes in. These are the, the crack pops, these are the realignments. I need to realign your spine. That can be very important for the joint pain. However, the joint pain might be from instability or not being strong enough. That's really common with that lower joint, that sacroiliac joint that I talked about. And that might be more balance the pelvis, maybe align it and do some spinal manipulation or the chiropractic adjustments. But after you do that, immediately things need to be strengthened and you need to have a good strengthening program with that. Um, the muscular pain, if it's the muscle spasms, those are usually a protective response for something else being injured. So getting to the heart of what else is being injured. So sometimes a spinal manipulation might be the right way to go. Um, but additionally, there's usually coordination stretches that need to be done. This is where yoga, cat cows, cat camels, child's poses and things like that might be really good because it's just going to help gently and slowly lengthen the muscle. You, the cat cow or the cat camel is great because it's going to get that coordination in there. That muscle is spasmed because the body's, it's the body's natural response to protect and it thinks that you're going to do something harmful to your back and it's keeping you, inhibiting you from doing anything. So the more you gently and slowly move it, the, the more that, that muscle spasm will relax and let go. The other kind of pain we talked about, the trigger points. Massage works really well for those. Deep tissue massage, trigger point therapy, myofascial releases and things like that feel amazing on those trigger points. But it's usually short lived. So those are the ones where uh, after I get a massage, I feel good for a few days, but it seems like that pain comes back. We're gonna go back to strengthening. Where trigger points are, usually the surrounding muscles are too long or lengthened and they're usually what they call turned off, inhibited or just weak. So doing the strengthening exercises is additionally good. So you get a massage, but you should also be strengthening those uh, uh, where those trigger points are. Um, and then lastly, we talked about the nerve pain, that traction, decompression, inversion tables. Those things usually work really well for nerve pain because it takes the pressure off of the nerve. Um, there's also usually the nerve is maybe swollen, it's inflamed, or it's tightened or stiffened. 
So there are certain nerve stretching techniques, they're called uh, nerve flossing, nerve mobilization, or neurodynamics. Those are all three words to explain pretty much the same thing, where a practitioner or a therapist can take you through certain ranges and elicit a little bit of a pull or a stretch on the nerve, but they don't hold it very long. You don't want to hold it longer than three, four, five seconds, and you slowly come out. Um, there are positions where they take that into a, they stretch the nerve on one end, but they put slack in the nervous system on the other end. Um, so those are really good options for the nerve pains. Um, so that's kind of a, whatever that was, 10 or 15 minutes right there, a big overview of the different types of low back pain and some different therapies. There are a lot of low back pains that can be self-managed. You can find some other videos. We have a lot of uh, the videos on our website that can help you self-manage it. It is highly recommended though with nerve pain or any pain that just isn't responding within a week to two weeks, you should definitely find a therapist that knows all of the different types of pain that can give you a good diagnosis and help get you on the right track, show you the right stretches and exercises so that you can start to manage this more properly. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, let us know and uh, I hope you learned something from this video today. Thanks a lot.